Hello, everybody. My name is Mr. Stormcrow, and we're back with another episode on the deep web. And this is going to be sort of to give the basics of what really the Tor client is and what it can do. And I'm glad to sort of bring this episode to light because I think a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions when they see the dark web for what it is. So I'll explain partly just a little bit for right now. But essentially, the dark web is sort of this Internet area where a lot of people can't really get access to it unless they have something that I would say is a Tor client, right? Um, that's the most common. I'm sure there's other ways of going about it, but mostly right now, the main way you can get there is through the Tor client, and we will be showing you, or well, I will be showing you on how to sort of um, just what it looks like, and I don't think I'll be showing you how. We'll maybe do another episode, but uh, I'll just be showing you like what is on here and what it looks like. So um, let's get started, shall we? All right, so let's move on to our first one. And this is something you'll probably see for quite a lot of times. This is pretty much an onion list. I call it like a Tor list. It really doesn't matter. The whole point, it's just a list of Tor links that hopefully will work depending on how long this would be created. Some links don't actually function because they may have been taken down from the person for, for maybe the host. Um, again, it's very rare to really find a site that works. From my experience, it seems a lot of these sites, if you're just finding it like randomly through like a search engine, right, that the Tor has, it's going to be really hard to actually find if it works. And we'll even go to that in a little bit, like the search engine you can find it's not like google but it still works and we'll show you on that but essentially some stuff you'll, that you'll find is like for example buy weed online now this of course i don't of course uh condone but this is like a thing that some people have like bitcoin uh another thing is of course marketplace financial services and also just in case the fbi is watching i do not condone if you do legal services, uh, that is something I do not condone. Do not do that, by the way. I just want to put in a claim there because it's what I believe. And it's also something you shouldn't do because it's illegal. Um, but again, it's also great that the deep web is here is because, for example, journalists, right? If they have information that could literally, you know, <laughs> right, they need something. And that's sort of what this is for, right? Information, the ability to communicate freely. You know, there are instances where journalists can get killed. And that's like, I know one of the common ways uh, that people use this. Now, again, let's sort of get to this whole list here. It has financial services. You'll see something like this, commercial services, hosting, blah, blah, blah. And you'll see categories within. It'll have like a little bit of a information in regards to like some couple of stuff here. Like, for example, for this one, web hosting, um, you'll have like freedom hosting and other stuff there that's really interesting. Apparently, there's one called Pachinko's web hosting services. Some are free and some are paid. I would assume that the paid ones are probably a lot better. Um, but yeah, it's really cool how they have a lot of interesting stuff. Apparently, there's like a blog and essay and personal pages. So some people will even just for fun, put like a blog entry just for fun, just you know, write up information, kind of like a journal entry. And that's what we'll find here. Maybe I'll show you in a little bit. But that's something you can actually find from time to time is you'll find like sort of like lists right on the tour or the deep web. And it's really interesting, especially it kind of gives like um, it kind of reminds me of the old days of the Internet and how basic uh, essentially Internet was. It wasn't like fancy smanchy. So this is something that really brings down a lot of memories for me personally. All right. So here's one thing I think a lot of people don't know. If you didn't know, the federal government <laughs> and people that are, you know, trying to track criminals are in on this, too. If you thought you were the only one to know the Internet, you would be surprised. Homeland Security is constantly monitoring the deep web. Well, I wouldn't say constantly, but they're they're trying to do something. And apparently it actually works. As it turns out, they've arrested a couple of people who have done a lot of drug trafficking, I would say, which is the most one. I don't know if sex trafficking is a thing on the deep web. I, I, heard, I hear that as a thing, but I don't know if it's really real. Um, but here are the people that are arrested. So here's an interesting dynamic with, I think, personally, these um, websites. Criminals actually use this to see what's really going on. So I'll give you an example. Let's say Bubba gets arrested. And on the forum, someone's like, I didn't get my shipment from Bubba. Someone's like, well, I saw this site called Disruptor Tour. It seems Bubba got arrested. So then let's say this guy who didn't get a shipment is like, I didn't get my money. Well, I got to get a refund. What's going on? And people get pissed off. And there's a lot of fighting, infighting with the deep web. And sometimes people even track down other people for killings. And I think even in recent times we had that happen. They'll actually know 
through this. It's really weird. They, yeah, so the police and the criminals have a dynamic where they're, like, checking each other out. And it's really, really weird. It's almost as if, like, they were to just have this gone, you know. Maybe maybe they could catch more criminals. But, again, it's really interesting to know that um, they've actually caught a lot of people. And again, yes, uh, the the police are in on this too. If you if you thought you were safe, you're, you're not. If you do illegal activity, they can probably catch you. So don't do that. I wouldn't recommend it because again, you will probably get caught if you do illegal shit on you. Um, it's very common, especially if you're doing drugs. You're you're gonna be caught. It's very easy. Okay. All right. So let's get our new one, which is this hacking community. I I looked at this a while back. I never really investigated it, but. What's, what this is, is it's a hacking community. I'm sorry if I can't talk. It's really late at night. It's like 11.44 p.m. I know it's not late for some people, but it is for me because, you know, I got to make sure my sleep schedule is fine. Um, but this is something. Um, apparently, it's a hacking community organization. I don't know if it's an organization, but they're a hacking community who are happy and just talking to themselves, right? Um, they got a forums. They got a group, media services. And it's really interesting to see how people like uh, people like these people, I would say, um, fine people, really are trying to figure out uh, how to make things work. And yeah, as you can see, they got a forums and all this and they communicate. So social media, in a way, still retains on the dark web, just in very different ways. And another one is Dread, which is probably the most common one. This is kind of somewhat of a communication, but also somewhat of a marketing, um, not marketing, but it's also a way where people can trade, right? They'll usually use of course, bitcoins, and they'll buy uh, procs from some people, right? Um, it's also a community, I would say. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see how there's people that's talking. And for the most part, they're chill. I would say a good amount of people on here probably are fine people. It's just, again, I think a lot of people sort of talk about the dark web as this bad thing, and it can be. But I think for the most part, it was essentially created to make sure people can have information that is free, that's private, right? Because as you can see, a lot of internet now i mean you'll have a tracker probably a lot of like security stuff going on it's really janky i'm not gonna lie especially with ads right that's the cool thing about the uh, dark web it doesn't have as much ads as the clear web which is the one that we're on right now for youtube right it's really it's really surprising a lot of these sites i've honestly liked because there's no advertisement right um which is something that you barely see anymore a lot of websites are monetized now in the clear web but not the deep web. this is really surprising to me all right so let's actually look at another one shall we so here's something that I found interesting. Um, they have made an operating system that's free. Now, from my impression, this is essentially a deep web that is made to be very like very tight on security, essentially. Um, so let's explore. Apparently, they say reasons to choose Debian. Major reasons, it's a free software. <laughs> Debian is made of free and open source software. It will be always 100% free free for anyone to use, modify, and distribute. So it's open source, which is very fantastic. That means people can manipulate. It's kind of like Linux, I would say, right? Debian is a stable, secured Linux. I was right. It's a Linux-based operating system. Debian is an operating system for a wide range of devices. So it seems like people that are not of major companies have pretty much wanted to release their operating systems free on the actual dark web. This gets interesting because I wonder how many actual websites have used Debian to manipulate it and create as their own right, for their own website and whatever they're trying to do. So they also say most hardware is already supported by the Linux kernel. Proprietary sorry, drivers for hardware are available when the free software is not sufficient. Debian provides smooth upgrades, and again, vice versa. I'll just, you know, leave it here. Just, you know, slowly scroll if you want to check it out. But yeah, uh, essentially they talk about how it's an operating system. And it's really reliable to a certain extent. And also, um, it's been, you know, it's on the deep web. So if you want to get it, apparently you can do that through here. So that is something that I was very surprised about. And also, if you want to just actually like see what's going on here, um, I would recommend actually going to one of the subreddits here, which is called r slash onions. This is a very useful board. I would recommend you highly if you're trying to get into like the tour client just to see what's going on. Um, they actually have a tab where it says the best parts of the anonymous internet. And these are pretty much always going to be active, right? You got DuckDuckGo, you got SeerX, uh, Candle, Ahemia, which is like a search engine. And I'll just show you right now what it actually seems or what it looks like here. Twitch uh, streamer, right? Let's, let's just search this up. Twitch streamer, um, Invidious. I wonder if this is actually... This is a legit a onion site, maybe with videos. Let me actually see if this is real. 
Invidious. Ah, I've heard about this one. This is actually sort of like a kind of an alternative to YouTube. <laughs> Video game donkey. Oh my god. Yeah, it seems like people are actually like making their own <laughs> legit video service. This is very interesting. Um, you got Lewis Rossman. You have yeah, and it seems again, this is probably I don't think this is gonna be on the clear web. I'll actually do a real good search. Um, this was of course called Nvidious. As you can tell, I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> but yeah, it seems like there's not really a media site like this, because when I search it, there's barely anything. So it seems that yeah, even like um you can search and find some really interesting sites. This is gonna be very slow though, as you can know, the Tor client is typically really slow as they're rotating their whole uh how should I say it, their um, locations their circuits pretty much and try to make that as secret as possible so because of that as a conclusionary um i guess result you're not going to have uh really fast videos right these are going to be really slow so that's something that i was very surprised about like they have video services uh kind of like youtube and i never thought that this would be a thing but it's here so that's going to be it for this video. Um, tell me if you want to actually see more of this. Do you find this interesting? Do you not find this interesting? Let me know in the comments below or let me know by just giving it a like and subscribing and put notifications on. I personally found this really interesting and I hope this helped you if you ever want to try to search on the, well, the tour client. So um, I'll probably try to make a sort of video on how to install the tour client, but uh, personally, for me, this is really interesting. I I, I don't know why. I, I just do. I guess it's just the idea that there's like a secret internet there, right? Um, that's like decentralized. Oh, oh. so um, that's about it. I'll see you guys probably later. And of course, check out some of my sorry, can't even talk right now. But check out some of my social media sites. Um, I have one. It's called thegutterhall.com. If you want to check that out, I do all the web development there. And also, I have Twitch live streams, Twitter. If you want to check that out, if you want to get in contact and other stuff like that. So that's gonna be it. As you can see, these are the sites that we have chose today. I'll probably do some different ones, but as you can see, this is, of course, Dread, one of the most famous ones, and yeah, Hacking Community. I gotta do more research on this. This looks really cool. I might be honestly interested. This is really intriguing. Yo, they got the Reddit icon before it was uh, <laughs> transformed into a better-looking Reddit. So, anyways, that's gonna be it. I'll see you guys later. My name is Mr. Stormcrow, and bye bye